I'm Mike Fratello, coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. We'll be back in a moment with one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody and welcome to the fastest half hour in television. One on one is in motion. You know who our guest is. We'll be back in just a moment. Is this kid O'Neill for real? Or is it a different game he plays? Find out for yourself in this exclusive new video, Shaquille O'Neal. Log your life. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. Your free video takes you back in time and behind the scenes with the young superstar. Can he have his fun and still be the best? Go for a spin with Shaq and find the answers free from SI. Call now and you'll also get an authentic Shaq basketball, the ultimate playground ball. Plus, get 54 issues of SI for only $1.47 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. Use your credit card. Call now and get your video and Shaq Ball both free from SI. There's only one Shaq, and there's nothing in the world like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. This is you. This is the commercial you see. This is the number you call. This is the operator you talk to. This is the stuff that arrives. This is the number you call. This is the box that comes. This is the machine you get. This is the number you call. These are the exercises you do. This is the number you call. This is how long it takes. This is how many times a week you do it. This is the number you call. This is how your dog looks at you. This is how your pants fit. This is the number you call. This is how you'll feel when you're done. This is the number you call. The Soloflex Muscle Machine, just $39 a month. Call now for a free brochure and video. This is the number you call. Welcome back, everybody. The fastest half hour in television, and we're underway with a lot of questions for Coach Mike Fratello of the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, Coach, first of all, welcome back to coaching. It's nice to be back. Three years was enough time away, and I'm very fortunate that I was able to hook up with NBC during that time. And Eddie had opened up uh, new avenues for me. I didn't know what TV was all about. I thought I did. I had done a little bit here and there of some uh, guest work with the playoff uh, appearances on TBS, TNT over the past years. but. When you get into it full time, you realize the preparation that goes on with uh, all the great ones, okay, behind the mic. Uh, to sit alongside of Marv Albert, Bob Costas, work with those people, it opens your eyes up and you have to make some decisions. Is this what you want? And for me, it was a great three years. I loved it. And when my day comes that coaching is no longer the thing anymore, I'd love to go back to that. I was going to say, because you had so much fun with these guys. Coaching obviously had to be ingrained in your body for you to turn down NBC and to move over to the sideline again. I had coached in high school for one year, college for eight years, and then in the NBA under Hubie Brown and Kevin Lockery, and then eventually getting my, my own job. When you put it all together, it was 21 years of coaching when finally it was time to move on and look for another job. My contract had ended in Atlanta. They wanted to go in a different direction. I needed to look for work. The NBC thing came up, and it was a great, very fortunate opportunity for me. You know, use that word fortunate because it's fortunate for you that you now know that you can be comfortable while you're coaching, win or lose, because you know that should you leave coaching, that the network's going to be on you like a dog in a bone. Well, there are certain nights right now that I wonder if I could just switch places with like Quinn Buckner. Maybe he wants to go back <laughs> and coach while I'll sit in his spot. He does our games on TV. Yeah, but I'll tell you one thing right now. You have been very successful. You relate to your players very well, and we can see that with the Cleveland Cavaliers, that you're a player's coach. I think there's a growth that takes place in all of us, regardless of what your position is, what your job is. Uh, as time goes by and you work in different situations, uh, dealing with the good times when everything's rolling your way, and then the tough times when things aren't going your way, uh, you develop from that, and you need to keep an open mind, open ears, and open eyes, and sometimes keep your mouth shut and try and learn from the situation what's taking place. Probably for me, the three years out of coaching was a great chance to watch other coaches who had a trust and allowed us to come into their practices and watch their preparations. Mm -hmm. I could see different ways of doing it that were successful, not just the way I was used to doing it, 
but other ways of getting things done. And if you're not willing to open up and incorporate this stuff that you learn from other people, then you're being very you know, closed-minded about it. You're never going to give yourself a chance to expand and grow. So I tried to take from the other people, and now you have to deal with the individuals, which differ from year to year and from team to team, because that's the most important thing. What's best for the group of guys you're working with? So in other words, like I said to Michael Jordan once, can you get better? Because it's scary thinking that here's one of the greatest players to ever play the game. Can he get better? You now are aware that you've answered the question, yes, I can get better because I've watched other coaches the three years I was out of it. When you only work under one or two people as an assistant, mm -hmm. you believe that that's the way to get it done if you had been successful. And I was under, you know, two of the guys who were either the greatest teachers or been involved for such a long time in this league, so there must be something right about what they do. That was Hubie Brown and Kevin Lockery. Hubie considered by many to be the greatest teacher no in basketball. Kevin Lockery has survived all these years in the NBA as a head coach from team to team, so there must be something right that they do. But maybe their way of doing it is a little different from the next four or five mm -hmm. guys who also are successful along the way, the Lenny Wilkins, the Don Nelsons. So why not try to take from them and see if that can, with your personality involved, because you have to be yourself with these guys, maybe by taking a little bit from all those people, it can take you to a different level. Coach, are you looking to be recognized when you no longer want to coach as one of the greatest coaches ever? Or are you looking for somebody, or are you looking for somebody to simply say, hey, here was a guy who uh, did his job? I think you strive for a little bit of both. You'd like to succeed and be as successful as you possibly can with the different organizations that you are. But I think when it's over, I'd like people to say that this guy could teach, this guy knew basketball, he could help teams win basketball games. And if that's the most I get out of it, then that satisfies me. I know I did my job, went to work every day, we were prepared, and I tried to help a group of 12 guys do the best they could do. Now, I realize you're going to obviously be the Chamber of Commerce for the Cleveland Cavs, but I got to ask you, how does this organization, management, etc., the people above you, relate to the organization that you came from, the Atlanta Hawks? Well, every organization is different, uh, but I was very fortunate. I, I have been under two owners, Ted Turner with the Atlanta Hawks, and now Mr. Gunn, okay, with the Cleveland Cavaliers, that uh, both are about as good as you could get as far as being the owner of a team and allowing the people below them to do their respective jobs. With Ted Turner, he had so much going on between the TBS and TNT and the Atlanta Braves, the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, Ted would come by, he'd watch the games, come in and talk briefly, and that was it. He was out of it. And coming into the situation in Cleveland, uh, Gordon Gunn has been basically the same as Ted Turner insofar as he has great trust in Wayne Embry, our president, general manager of the team. You know, I think he sees that Wayne and I get along well together, and he's basically said, you guys work it out. I'm here whenever you need me. He may ask you a question, but it's just really to learn a little more about what's going on. So I don't know if you could have a better situation. Let me ask you this, because you said that you've coached in college ranks. Yeah, okay? I was uh, eight years in college. How does that relate to the fact that now you might not do as much teaching as you did in, in the college ranks? Or am I wrong? Are you able to do as much teaching with Cleveland? Because most coaches still enjoy that teaching aspect, and there's a little more done in college. It's the great part of, of the game, the fact that you have the opportunity to work with such talented individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, in college, in high school, and I'm sure all the coaches out there at those levels can appreciate this, you may have the greatest drills, the greatest plays, you run them to perfection, and when the guy's open, he shoots the ball and misses the shot. And he does that time after time after mm -hmm. time. Or you run the cuts, you run the cuts, the guy with the ball passes it out of bounds because their skill level isn't as high as what we're blessed with That's in the mean. NBA. We have the best that there is. So when you do all this, it looks good at the end because they knock the shot down, they make the right pass, they catch it complete, they finish the playoff in the end. The difference here in the NBA is the time between games doesn't allow you to do as much as you used to do in college. College, you may have averaged two slash three games a week. In the NBA, you're up around four slash five sometimes games a week. That's, that's tough. Coach, uh, college ranks you're playing for pride. The pros, you're playing for money. Sometimes there's selfishness that gets involved. Uh, you've got to baby these guys in some cases. You're up to that. You love that now. That's not a problem for you? We need to guard against the biggest disease that may have infected sports all around, all sports, and that is uh, the contractual situation that we're dealing with players right now, the monies that are out there, the endorsements, uh, advertising, uh, the marketing of the players themselves. 
and it's a disease that can pull our sports down if we're not very careful. Uh, they still have great pride. They still want to go out and compete, and there are still X number of guys that go out and play just to play and try and win a basketball game. But the money's now have gotten to the point where uh, players are being advised and pulled and tugged in so many different areas uh, that it's something they need to be aware of and be willing to deal with. We, too many times now we have players that are under the mentality of, what happens down the road is not my concern. What happened before me is not my concern. This is my window of six, eight years in the league. Let me just get as much as I can and get out of here. And unfortunately, that's not going to help our game keep going up to the top as it has over the last 12, 15 years uh, while the NBA has been on this meteoric rise to the top of sports. Uh, we need to consider how did we get to this point and what about down the road what's going to happen because there's still a lot out there you can make. But keep things on an even keel. We'll come back and spend some more time with Coach Mike Fratello right after we pause for these messages. Don't you go away. The fastest half hour on television will continue. Sports fans, you've seen the best. Now Marv Albert's here to show you the rest. Lots of forcing around in the world of sports. There's 45 minutes of non-stop fun in Marv's great new video, the hilarious Albert Achievement Award. And best of all, your video's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. In this great new video, Marv captures all the amazing footwork, agility, grace, and power that makes sports so much fun to watch. Hysterical! Call now and you'll also get your choice of an authentic NFL Pro-Line hat, free. Pick your favorite team, it's up to you. The Albert Achievement Awards video and the NFL hat of your choice make a great gift for yourself or your favorite sports fan. And it comes with 54 issues of Sports Illustrated. For only $1.47 an issue, you save over 50% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Nobody's into sports like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. Nobody gonna slow me down. Oh, no. At National Car Rental, we keep you moving. Introducing Continental's Bake Sale with great low fares to destinations throughout the Caribbean, Mexico, and Florida. Introducing Roland Martin's revolutionary new helicopter lure. Its movement and colors grab the fish's attention. Its sound and scent trigger the strike. The helicopter lure is actually four lures in one. It's a buzz bait. It's a spinner bait. It's a deep water jig. Plus, it's a weedless plastic worm, so you can fish it in any kind of cover. Call now and you'll receive 30 patented helicopter lures, each impregnated with Dr. Juice's helicopter scent, five laser-sharp eagle claw hooks, three twist-resistant ball-bearing swivels, and five hideaway weights. Plus, we'll include the helicopter lure utility box and Roland Martin's how to cast and catch with the helicopter lure. And yet there's more. Order your helicopter kit now, and we'll also include free Roland Martin's exciting new video customizing your copter for the catch of the day. The helicopter lure, where the big boys meet the end of the line. To order your helicopter lure kit for only $29.95, call this toll-free number now. Roland Martin's helicopter lure is guaranteed to catch more and bigger fish with quicker strikes and surer sets, or return it within 30 days for a full refund. Remember, this is an exclusive TV-only offer, so call now. Welcome back to the fastest half hour on television. Coach Mike Fratello, how do you deal with uh, the 12 guys? Because they're all individuals. Do you deal with them on an individual basis? Some guys need a kick in the butt. Some guys need uh, a smile. Some guys need uh, some encouragement. How do you deal with 12 totally different individuals? What you're basically talking about are 12 corporations. Each <laughs> is a corporation in themselves. <laughs> yeah. Each has all this other stuff going on. And I think what you try to do is hope that, one, you have a good bunch of guys, guys that have some character within them and that there's this fiber running through them that wants them to compete and be the best. Because if you have that, then you'll have that internal leadership away from the coaching staff, which you have to have to win, from someone within. They will get themselves up on nights when they need to get themselves up. They'll work hard. Their work, eth work ethic will be good in practice every day. And that all you know, carries on into wins. Uh, as far as dealing with the corporations, you need to understand that their days are filled up and scheduled, just like yours and mine. But somewhere in there, they've got to believe that the two and a half or three hours that they're on the basketball court, that's the most important three hours because everything else comes off of that as a result of that. You need to realize as a coach that before you came to practice, they may have been out with an agent. 
shooting a TV spot, endorsing a product. Mm -hmm. After practice, they may have been out with someone looking for an investment, a business, a property. Mm -hmm. So for the block of time that you have them, from the time they walk in the building from the, to the time they leave, you want them concentrating on that. But then keep in mind that after that time, there are a few other things going on in their lives. So it, it's a different situation from high school and from college because these are men now who have grown up and are dealing with a lot of outside influences and factors that the high school or collegiate youngster does not deal with. Each is different, and I believe that you need disciplines that are the same for everyone, but everyone is an individual and may need to be treated a little bit differently from the person next to them. I'm listening to you and getting the idea that one of the reasons why you're still walking the sidelines is because you like the challenge of molding these people to a cohesive unit. Well, this certainly is a challenge. It's a challenge any time you try to put a group together and have them all heading for the same common goal. That's difficult enough. Uh, that's why I marvel at, you know, baseball's two times the size of basketball mm -hmm. and football's almost two times the size of a baseball squad. And I marvel at how you get all these different pieces working together. Uh, you know, I played four years of collegiate football but knew I never wanted to coach football after that because there were too many parts to it, too many pieces to it to try and get together. I felt you couldn't be hands-on in football. All of this had to be delegated out to assistant coaches, the punting, the kickoff team, the specialty teams, the defense, the backs, the linebackers, the linemen. Basketball, you can be more hands-on, so the teaching is still part of it. You can still feel that, hey, it's, it's the 12 guys, it's the two or three coaches together, and that's who's going out and trying to win this thing. You like that two hours, two and a half hours of, of teaching during the day, don't you, oh, before the game? That's fun, Ed. That's, that's what it's about. You, you do your preparation, you go out there, you put it in, and then when you watch it during the game, if it works, it's kind of a sense of accomplishment that, hey, we all put our heads together, this is what we came up with, they went out and executed it, it worked, you get a win, you go on to the next game. Have you ever uh, gotten up in the morning or went to bed at night, and before you did, kind of lie there for a moment and say, I think I'm a good coach. I know I'm a good coach. Have you done that? I don't know if you do that as much as you second guess yourself. I'm wondering if I'm doing enough. Am I doing it right? Am I getting the things done that, uh, that, that we have to do? I think more, you know, coaches go through more of that uh, than coaches do sit there saying, you know, I'm pretty good. I, I think it's more the other way that you sit there and say, I wonder if I could have done this differently. I wonder if I could have done that differently. Or what can I come up with to help this group turn them around if they're heading the wrong way or, or get them out of this tailspin? I think coaches do a lot more of that soul searching in trying to find the solution to a problem that you may be dealing with. This team that you are with, the Cleveland Cavaliers, this team that you're molding together to the big dance one day, hopefully, uh, do you think that they have that potential to really get to the big dance? Because Cleveland haven't, hasn't been there before. When I took the job and looked at this team on paper, I honestly thought it had a chance if we added a little piece here or there of making a run at the NBA championship. I think Lenny Wilkins and his staff, when they were there, came this close within a basket. That basket always seemed to come by, from Michael <laughs> Jordan, by the way. But Lenny Wilkins That's and right. his staff were that close to getting there. So with Jordan retiring, if we could add maybe another little piece, I thought we had a chance of, of actually doing it. Little did we know that Larry Nance was going to retire, that Brad Doherty was going to have back surgery, Gerald Wilkins was going to tear his Achilles tendon, John Battle was going to have two knee surgeries, mm -hmm. and on and on down the road with the things that took place. But you can't dwell on that because the games go on, the year goes on. So in year one, when all this was happening, taking place, we started out 7-14. and 14, And we had a meeting with the players and we said, what do we want to do with this season? We're at the quarter point in the season, 21 games. Do we want to pack it in and say, hey, we just can't win this year because we don't have enough? Or do we want to try and salvage something out of it? Let's become overachievers with what we have left. Well, that group turned it around and wound up with 47 wins after starting out 7-14. And, and coming back into year two now, looking at the addition of Michael Cage, even though you know, Larry Nance retired, we picked up Michael Cage, we thought it was a great pickup. The maturation process that takes place with the young players a, a, year, mm -hmm. you know, a year more under their belt. Terrell Brandon coming back healthy, no mononucleosis like he had during the first season. <laughs> Again, you know, we said, we think we're good enough to take a run at it. But Unfortunately, we've had our series of injuries, and we're doing the best we can do to try and make it to the playoffs and see how far we can go from there. Talking about how far you can go, I got a feeling that with a couple of strong legs, uh, uh, how far you go might depend on Mark Price. There's no question that Mark Price is a focal point in this basketball team. He, so much happens off of him, not only his ability to score big points, shoot the basketball, but he creates 
so much for his teammates. It, it makes the job easier many nights out for the other guys if they just get in the right place, get themselves ready to catch and shoot the basketball because Mark draws that type of attention. He's always got two and three guys running after him, trying to get the ball out of his hands. And he's so unselfish, he'll give the ball up. We'll be back for a final segment with Coach Mike Fratello of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Stay with us. Carrie Novak won't waste a minute battling her cold. Pills take time to dissolve, so she'll rush relief with the effervescent power of Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. It's ready the moment you take it, rushing powerful medicines to soothe your aches, relieve your runny nose, free your breathing. Okay, now, today I'd like to talk to you about adding color and texture. Nothing rushes relief like Alka-Seltzer Plus. Hey, the Miss Perfect pageant. Yeah. Miss Perfect. We're watching hockey. That's it. Hockey. Let's watch hockey. both. Miller Lite presents the Miss Perfect Face-Off. Okay, Bob, Miss Georgia goes to the corner. She pays the price. Here's the puck coming loose. Nice shot. She scores! Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less filling, you can combine anything. Oh, that'll be sashing two minutes for Miss Congeniality. Bad call. Good beer. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? Ever wonder how remotes get lost? Mm. Well, no matter how your remote gets lost, Magnavox makes the only television that can find it. With the exclusive remote locator, you just push a button, and your remote beeps, telling you where it is. Aww. Hey, we make technology people want. Magnavox. Smart. Very smart. Where in the world would you go if there were no Las Vegas? What other place will you ever find where you can spend the entire day teeing off, stepping out, or just winding down, and all night really living it up? Only in Las Vegas. Welcome back, everybody. The final segment with Coach Mike Fratello and uh, your style of basketball. I think the style of basketball is dictated by the type of players that you have. When I was in Atlanta, we had a young group. We had turned nine players over from the first roster that I had and came back with five rookies the one year, a couple draft picks in there, and a couple guys we picked up you know, from here and there. The teams had cut. And at that time, I was able to start Doc Rivers, Randy Whitman in the backcourt, up front with Dominique Wilkins, Kevin Willis, and Tree Rollins, mm -hmm. back them up with Spud Webb, John Battle, Cliff Levingston, Antoine Carr, and John Conkett. Our best offense a lot of nights, Ed, was get down as quick as you can, shoot it off the glass. If it doesn't go in, go get it and put it back in the basket again. We had depth. We had young, exciting players with great athleticism so we could play an up-tempo style of play, press, trap all over the floor. Then you come to another situation in Cleveland where now we don't have the same depth that we had then. We have a couple guys who are moving up in years, would be you know, called the uh, older by NBA standards right now. Once you get around that 30 mark, that's dangerous in the NBA. So your style has to play, uh, change a little bit. We, we pick and choose our opportunities when we run. We don't trap and press nearly as much you know, in the open court. And we're more selective in our opportunities of when we play an up-tempo type of game. We call it uh, tempo management right now, which is a nice way of, of wording it, I think. And also, I guess that you probably call it uh, striving to be uh, or getting down in the sack and pulling out some more of that heavy coaching because you don't have the material that you, like you said in Atlanta, you had the material. Now you really show management and yourself what kind of coach you are because you're coaching with what you have. Well, when, when the injuries took place this year, we, we sat down again as a group. We, we do most of our things in, with our team as a group. We mm -hmm. discuss uh, things together in the room. And when these unfortunate things took place and we sat down, we said, okay, what's the best way for us to give ourselves a chance to win and succeed with who we have? We have quality players. We just don't have maybe as many mm -hmm. as, as some you, other rosters yeah. do, okay, because we've been depleted by some of these injuries. So in early experimentation during the exhibition season and maybe in our first six or eight games we did a little tinkering here or there and sometimes you get fooled you go out and you play a style that's not really your style but you're successful and the players and the staff start to think you know we can play this way and, and, and do well but then you're usually brought back to reality by the next game or two where you try to play that way and you get blown out of the game and you realize we can't continue to do this over an 82 game schedule 
So you decide what your style is, and you try to be as good as you can be playing that style. During the course of 1994, 95, what did you see along the sideline that maybe you hadn't seen before during that 11-game winning streak? What did you see, you as a coach walking the sideline, because you do a lot of prancing, what did you see in that 11-game winning streak that you hadn't seen, things that you want to continue to see more of? Well, the one thing that I realized, and I, and I probably have to go back to last year, this team has a great inner strength and belief in one another. They are very close as a group. They do a lot of stuff off the court together. And on the court, when they show up, it's as if they're punching in, hey, it's time to go to work. They do their job, what's expected of them. This isn't like pulling teeth with this group. This is a, a very, very unique group that we have in Cleveland. They have, like I said, internal leadership from Hot Rod Williams and Mark Price. One does it more by the mm -hmm. talking process, the other does it more by example. But the team knows those are the two leaders that we have on this team. And they kind of set the tone for, hey, we have to go to work now, let's go. They get them ready for the games that way, and they set out to give the effort on the floor, try to win every night out. If you don't win sometimes, we move on to the next one and go after it that way. So during the 11-game run, I saw all of that taking place, and then each night it was kind of interesting how a different guy would step up and have a big night. You weren't just going to say, hey, it's Mark Price again tonight. One night it was Hot Rod, one night it was Bobby Phils, guy off the bench, Chris Mills from the small forward spot, Terrell Brandon from the backup point guard spot. We had a lot of guys doing their share of the work. This, you haven't diminished any love for the game because of your inadequacies at this moment. No, it's, it's probably grown. I think the guys have uh, they've grown closer together. And they see that there are more hurdles. and about bigger. your love for the game? Well, my love for the game, the passion for the game, is so involved with the players' passion for the game because we are in this thing together. And when I see how they banded together and, and how they took on the challenge, it made it even greater and more fun for me to be part of that, realizing that they weren't going to pack it in and give up on this season. They weren't going to come and say, let's not do that much preparation for this team because we don't have a chance to win. They believe they can win each night out. So what I was getting to is, through them, okay, my passion grows even greater and stronger. Well, you're inspiring, and I got to ask you, with that in mind, look at that camera for a moment, and there's some young people out there who need some inspiring. Any, rec any thoughts to the young folks out there? The only thing I could tell them is that you need to realize that everyone out there is not blessed with the same talent. God gives us all different abilities, and, and he's heading us in different directions. Sometimes when you're young, you just don't know what direction he's heading you in. And we all might want to be pro players, but we all may not have the same talent. Whatever it is that you want to set out and do. I have a son who's very gifted in acting, in drama, and someday he would love to be in movies, on stage, producing perhaps TV shows at some point. But that's his passion right now, and I just encourage him to be the best he can be at what he does. And as parents, we need to try and help our youngsters along with that and give them that guidance, give them the support they need, but understand that they're growing in their own direction. Coach Mike Fratello, my pleasure. Thank you. The fastest half hour in television, and I had a lot more for Coach Mike Fratello, but time is gone, and we thank him for visiting with us. Mike, thank you. Best of luck to you, too.